Welcome to the Hay Show. I keep oh, right. hitting my head on the back. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna, gonna do this again. <laughs> You're gonna introduce this again. No, Michael, take over. Okay. You're in charge. So welcome to the Hey Show. This is definitely a show not for experts. This is a show for people who. Oh, I lost it. See, you see how hard, difficult yeah. that is. I so had it like, right in my head. This is a show for people yeah. who suck. Uh, yeah. That's pretty why much. we have no followers. Yeah, that is Everyone's also good. Suck. Everyone's this is a labor, <laughs> Chad. This is a labor of love. All of our wives are, are significant others know that. It's a it's a labor of love. I got out of like doing house stuff today, so we could do this. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah, My wife was thanks. very upset. <laughs> wife or Mine went shopping in other. champagne, so. Oh yeah, you're hurting. Send us money sure mine to is cover upset. my target bill. <laughs> All right, so the first uh, one we have today is a. Uh, uh, another repeating one. I really like this one. I'm going to eventually, we're going to start like roasting people on this one eventually. But right now we're trying to ease in. I do like to give Ronnie the most boring MMA matches. That's where we're going to start at. This is, oh my God, I need to re-examine my life choices. Ronnie got to sit through one of the greatest barn burning of matches ever. And that is Naganu versus Lewis. A match or a fight like that is supposed to have fireworks. It's the, the whole reason you make that make that fight is to have two great big strong knockout fighters knock each other out, and it didn't even come. It's close one of those fights that, that, like, when you look at it on paper, it's like there's no way this is not going to be exciting, you know. Mm-hmm. And but. that almost it just seems like a lot of times that's how those fights go. Yeah. Um, it's always they always say like things like, um, oh, if you get two grapplers together, they're going to strike in the cage because they're both afraid of each other's grappling. Um, you get two strikers in the cage, they're not going to grapple, they're just going to not hit each other. And that's, that's <laughs> the, it's the weirdest thing. It's, and uh, I know there's like everyone wants to make fights like uh, the, the fight everyone wants to see right now is going to be the uh, Pareda and um, Anasanya fight, the, the rematch. I was going to bring that up. That, this, that last fight of his was, I mean, not nearly as boring as the Derek Lewis right. and Ganyu one, but it was kind of a similar thing. Two guys yes. that you expect to go out there impressive strike and impressive yeah. strength and they just kind of they're both kind of afraid they're i afraid. do want to see that match though i it, it's it, we always will pay for it right yeah. well we will always pay for it because there's there's a there's a chance there's a chance it's going to be amazing and it that rug is just right there and uncle dane has got his hand <laughs> on it he's like oh i'm gonna give it to you and then those fighters will just pull right out under you um but yeah i i I never want to not watch one of those fights, though. Yeah. It's because there's always that opportunity. So I will always watch those fights because there's always an opportunity for it to be amazing. I don't I, – I, if I'm reexamining my life choices, I will still watch that fight, but I will not watch it again. <laughs> <laughs> I've made my mistake. Yeah. So I don't need to be like, man, I wish there's I just There's not a never... lot to learn from right. it, you know? I'm a committed kind of person. <laughs> yeah. It, it's, it's one of those things where I'm, I'm not purposely trying to pick – a boring thing. Right. I'm trying to pick one that it's so technical, you kind of enjoyed it. Yeah. This one wasn't though. I mean, <laughs> it, and it's because those they're not technical strikers. They are brawlers. Brawlers. And if you get two brawlers and they decide to not brawl and they try to technical strike, there's not a lot of technique. Yeah. There's to just it. too much yeah. respect. Yes. Yeah. I would. I would agree. This was this one when I when I gave it to you and then I watched it. I was like. Ooh, that's rough. <laughs> I was like, I, I, I shouldn't have done that. But, yeah, I, I agree. Like, I, I'm trying to find that, that sweetness there, and we're trying to give them some right. hidden gems to go watch. I would say this one was not. Even though the last one you watched, you said, yeah, you actually yeah. kind of enjoyed it. And the reason I enjoyed that, that, that last one was is there were two very distinct game plans. And you can see it. And we always talk, like, Brandon's one of your favorite things is, like, uh, you got to have a game plan going into a tournament. These two had a defined game plan, and they just couldn't execute it. Where on these guys, their game plan was don't get knocked out. It's not a game plan. Yeah, great. Uh, Jackson is always my favorite coach because I love his game plans and stuff Mm -hmm. like that. What I will say is he is also, I think, the worst at – his fighters will do the game plan no matter what if it's not working. That's true. Yeah. Uh, like, Waterson lost one not too long ago where I was like, listen, I understand what you're trying to do here, but they're not going to score those leg kicks. Yeah. Right. And uh, they didn't, and she lost, and I didn't think she lost that fight. But anyways, that's kind of it. Now, 
Chad and Brandon got another special assignment. Now, this is another one where we're not worship. Like, we, should, we need a hierarchy. Like, we're going to put one up next time of things that all BJJ podcasts do. We worship at the altar of Gordon Ryan. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we tell you why Nogi is superior to every other type of grappling. And we also say, uh, our overlords at IBJJF, please send us money. But this one, I'm sure everyone has done, and that is the, I can't even say it, Urban survival center yeah something like that yeah something like that it's the detroit guy <laughs> legit. We, yeah legit detroit urban so, survival center Drink we throw it out eat it <laughs> we started this by us discussing if this is a parody i am not sure i but i'm the only one right everyone else thinks this is i think it's a hundred percent pinching real. the thigh will work every time <laughs> Okay. Chad's in I joke mode right now. No, so I'm being serious. <laughs> so, Life so, or death, someone's ripping your head off, just pinch their pinch thigh. Pinch the thigh. So, Solves the problem. Let's go immediately. He doesn't break the, your neck. He doesn't slam you. He doesn't knee you in the face. He doesn't knee you in the stomach. Nothing. I think it's pinch the, the next level of McDojo. No. I think it's the I, next I think level it is. of real life. <laughs> so I don't know. But what did you think? I sent you a guillotine defense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And a and, rear naked choke. And... <laughs> The video is actually titled something else. <laughs> is it? Yeah. You didn't read it. It's probably it's, it's, titled it's, it's, it's Awesome old. Technique. No, it's, it's, it's like Rape Defense is what oh, it's goodness. called, which I was just like, How do you rape when, here? when you're like, when you read that <laughs> yeah, though, man. it's like kind of stunning, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, who's what? the one raping? The one in the front or the back? <laughs> So, uh, Brandon, Chad, I'm gonna just go. We've already <laughs> we pumped out a lot of jokes already, but I'm gonna go ahead and just by backing up to my opponent. Yeah. I'm just gonna go ahead and hand it off to you guys. Do you guys need to reexamine your life choices? After yeah. seeing that, I mean, I'm gonna implement that thigh pinch next time. <laughs> but I definitely that's how you escape we'll see the how it works. That's how you escape. The <laughs> that's how you escape. That's the how you escape everything. Yeah. If yeah. you just pinch the inner thigh, they'll let go. They'll quit jujitsu and they'll mm-hmm. rethink their life. In a in a past uh, episode, we talked. But about if the that doesn't motion. work, ripping his eyeballs out is the next best thing. <laughs> he, do, he tries now. To, he, he literally now, says his eyes might come out. Now, um, <laughs> he does have a video out there, and it says like, "Hey, everybody out there that's making fun of me and saying I'm not here to teach you how to grapple." I'm not te- here to teach you how to whatever. He's yes, like, I'm here, here to save your life. I'm here to save your life, and this is self me. defense. <laughs> now, what I, what I'm saying is, saying this guy's best. not <laughs> trying to act like he knows everything. I'm just curious when he says he could rip the eyeballs out. Has he experienced the eyeballs yeah, coming out this? that he knows, or is he just making shit up like the rest of the shit that he made up? <laughs> okay, here we go. Now we go. Now, now we got the real thing. So, <laughs> so, so, gone. So, the real Chad's back. So, um, yes. do, do you, Brandon, Chad, do you guys need to reexamine your life choices that you had to sit through that video. Um, it was hard. Um. No I gotta be she honest. She never said that. I gotta be honest. I've seen this guy for almost a year now doing this stuff, and I've already formed an opinion a long what time pisses ago. Pisses me off is, is we have a hundred views on our channel. And we have good content, <laughs> and that dude's got thirty-one thousand. Well, clearly, views on good his content is very subjective. I mean, just purple. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a good we, color. Um, good we. Color. It's a balance. Uh, the, the, the the thing with it, the it's thing both hot and cold. The thing that's interesting, in all honesty, about it is. It does seem like it's just made up, yeah. like it, it's like movie stuff. Yeah, it is. Like That's the what guns, it feels like. you know, like yeah. the, the the gun food. I do stuff. love the guns in the back and the weapons in the back, and you know, maybe some of the gun stuff might Dude, be a little more Dude, all I know is if you do that but... shit in Detroit, you're gonna die. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you're in Detroit, if someone gets you in a guillotine in Detroit on the street, and your only option is to pinch the thigh and like twist out, like. I, I'm gonna go Good to. The, I'm gonna be the person that makes it serious and say this is really sad if this is real. I mean, I this is what you're teaching your law enforcement. But I, yeah, gonna die. But what what I I look at it from another perspective of that this guy is also saying, hey, I'm teaching women how to defend themselves and stuff right. like that. Yeah, because here's that, the thing: at the end of the day, even if you can get out of that technique, let's say that works. Let's say you eye gouge them. Let's say you pinch their thigh. And they're you still get, gonna turn around and be right there. They're still, unless my <laughs> eyeballs are hanging out of my socket and I can't see you. I mean, still, if my eyeballs are hanging out of my socket and I can grab you, I am going to kill you. I heard a story one time <laughs> yeah. that Boss Rutten told that was almost exactly like this. He said he was in a gym. These 
this ninjutsu school came into his gym, like dojo storm style. It was like three right. girls. They sat on the sidelines, watched him do techniques, and they were like, no, that wouldn't work. I would just claw your eyes out. And he was like, okay, well, come over here. Let, let, go for it. And he put the rear naked choke in, and he was like, all right, now go. And as soon as he, he reached up, she just squeezed her, and that's it. I mean... <laughs> I thought yeah. you were gonna say boss room beat the shit out of a bunch of women. I was like, man, this story's gonna, gonna, be gonna, be gonna, story. this is gonna no. get intense. No, it's like the same thing. thing. There was two opinions going on here. Like, this is scary. Chad's like, yes. <laughs> I love women. <laughs> I'm just saying, people always think that you can just claw someone's eye out. It's not that easy, you know. I can hide my eyes too. I can just put my head down in the rear naked choke and like, you're gonna go to sleep. Yeah, but you're not gonna claw my eye out. You're not gonna scratch my face enough that I'm gonna let go of this to let did you get he out. Let her have her shurikens. In, <laughs> right. The, uh, exactly. The, the ninja this stars. has always been the frustrating part to me. Is I get a lot of people and I get a lot of parents that come in and they want to sign their daughter up. And I, to me, I think. I think every woman should have to graduate. I think everyone should have to graduate with a blue belt from high school. I really do. I, Abu Dhabi does it. I think it's a great thing to offer. I'll tell you I what. It changed my confidence level tremendously when I started training I, in jiu-jitsu. I think, I think you should have to do some sort of self-defense. I wouldn't say grappling, but I'd say anything. But I think I think grappling in Brazilian jiu-jitsu is the best defense for women. Yeah, I, I, I agree. do. I think Absolutely. because all the situations, no guy attacking a woman comes in and punches her in the face, beats the shit out of her, yeah. and then... Yeah. Most sick people, unfortunately, with all the studies, say that they want that fight, right? And that's mm-hmm. what makes them do what they do. So most of the situations are a grappling-based situation. It's always a if you one-handed know, choke or something, I feel yeah. like, most of the time. Um, but I think that if you're thinking that you can do one course, one self-defense course, or you can yeah. do eight sessions a year on how to do this, oh, mm-hmm. eye gouge them, your cardio is not there. Your right. flexibility is not there. Your awareness isn't there. Your okay, you eye gouged him, but what do you do next? You think you can outrun him? He's yeah. he's bigger than you. He's stronger than you. You know, like you need to be training full time, and there isn't no one course or you yeah. know, oh, I did a summer course and now I'm protected. No, yeah. you need to be in shape. You need to be training all the time. You need to be getting smarter and more aware of every position so that you're not you're not freezing. We, we teach a lot of women's self-defense because Sun Yin's a good conduit into that because, you know, she's smaller than everyone else, she's whatever, but she just beats the yeah. shit out of grown women. It proves what, it to them right yeah, there. Yeah, but w- what I'm saying is is I've actually had people, when I'm introducing it, like, they're like, oh, if I take this class, I'm good. I go, no. no. Yeah. I go, you need to come and train full time. I said, this is like the bare bones of it. Like if this specific scenario happens, Mm -hmm. you know that, hey, there's a way I can get out. After that, here's a fight. I'm not saying a few classes isn't like, it's applicable. Yeah, exactly. But everyone sucks. I mean, not everyone, but a majority of people suck at fight. A majority of people don't even know how to move their body at all. Like not even defend themselves. If you could just just do like one day a week consistently for a year and just stay in shape and learn the good techniques, it would probably be, efficient enough yeah. for you to survive but you can't do one day or two days and think that you're i mean look how many kids classes we're teaching kids the same damn submission a year later and they're still not getting it right and they're still missing stuff right and it's like well how are you going to want to fight your grip can't just slip off you're you can't lose all these things because now your opponent or the person attacking you is mad yeah you I, lost the element of surprise now i would be scared to talk to your kids at your school, like I talk to the Moequa kids sometimes. The, their parents are really brainwashed into this, and they really, but like the other day, our kids were jacking around, and I looked at them and I said, what, I, I looked at a kid and I said, what if someone's attacking your mom over there? Is this how you're gonna defend them, defend her? And the kid was like, well, no, I would do this. I said, then why are you bringing that same intensity here? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I said, you're not here to be a world champion in jiu-jitsu, you're here to defend yourself. Right. And, you know, and the kid, like, snapped out of it, and he went back on. But I was just like, it's just silly to just, like, do this half ass to me yeah. as a kid. I've tried to do more of that, too, you know, because they're like, why do I need a belt? Why do I need a gi? How do you expect to learn a technique that's complicated to the course that it can be done four different ways, it can be escaped four different ways, and then it can go into 50 other things right as soon as it's escaped uh, if you can't tie your belt? I think gi jiu-jitsu is more applicable to street fights than no gi anyway. Well, I mean, I'm not even talking about that element. All the kids have to wear gis. 
But, you know, I mean, to me, it's like, look, if you can't create habits in your life, and that's what I've been telling the kids, and I think parents like that, if you can't brush your teeth or you can't clean your room or you can't do your homework or you can't listen to your parents or you can't tie your belt, how can you really defend yourself? I mean, you have to learn how to create these structures in your life if you want to be able to have success or be able to defend yourself or whatever it is. Yeah, that's, that's like me. I am the least confident striker in the world. I hate getting punched in the face. But like Ronnie sees it. Once a month, I make myself go and spar Sun Yun just so I'm like, it's sad that I say Sun Yun, but it's the only person I spar with. And she hits me well, hard. I spar with Gage. Yeah, yeah. No. Yeah, no shit. God, it's not no. fun. No, it's the scariest it, thing. But it's not he, fun. Ronnie the other night, man, that was a rough night. It was Sun Yun, Gage, Dustin, and him. And Gage was just on them about, like, everything. And I was like, oh, my God. I was scared watching it. Like, Gage I, is I, rough. Yeah, Dude, I would throw not. some head kicks and shit at you. I've yeah. seen it in sparring. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the head kicks don't bother me near as much because I I normally block those, but it's the it's everything else that hurts. That back fist he does is just yeah, like back fist sucks. He just um, back fist people. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's just like that sucks and it's I, insulting. To be honest though, Dustin's the harder strike because he yeah. he just hits harder. Yeah, he and, hits and hard. it, Not even trying, he yeah. just hits harder. But he's more precise with it. Um, but but. Um, going with those guys man and that's another thing like like chad was talking about to circle back um the if you don't actually roll that's another thing like like we have some even adult women that come in and they'll they'll do the drilling and then they will oh, roll in i'm leaving and like you you gotta you gotta, you gotta roll resistance you, you gotta, gotta feel it. resistance exactly because and you gotta you, get caught like Think about think about like when I roll now, right? Like when I be when I first started rolling, I'm like, Ugh, yeah, exactly. you know. And now I'm like, yeah, whatever, you know. Like, and mm-hmm. I know that if I actually got in a fight outside here, mm-hmm. right, I'm not going to be that comfortable. But even if I'm you will half, be. huh? You will be. I know, but if it was like a real fight, like life or death, I get attacked in the alley and my adrenaline spikes. Right, it's not going to be like in class. I do right? my work all the time, and I, I'm the calmest person in it. And you know, I don't know how I would react, it. but I guarantee you it would be better. Than, than just drilling a technique one day a week. And, you know, like I feel like once I got to a place where I knew mm-hmm. I know all this and I'm good, then I would be able to calm down. But in the minute, you know, like and it, it is, it's seconds, it's minutes. And like if you're freezing, if you're hesitating, that's you dying. But sparring is very important, I think, to learning that, yeah. how to defend yourself properly. It's yeah. getting, you know, they're skipping the sparring part. And a lot of people are skipping the sparring part because they're scared. Yeah, or they're uncomfortable. Right? Uh, uncomfortable and then, is the biggest one. Here's the thing. What do you think's gonna and I tell my kids this all the time, what do you think when the bully gets on top of you? You think you could just say, I'm done? Yeah, you, you just say just tap? Do you think I can say, Well, I don't like this? Like, you gotta get used to that uncomfortable thing. Corey wanted to quit jujitsu about a year ago and I, I literally told her, I'm like, No. I said, No. I said, You you, you need this. One, you're gonna have all fights because you're mouthy as shit. <laughs> two, She's uh, yeah, there's levels two. to this. Yeah, so. yeah there's, levels, there's to levels to this. But two, I, I told her, I said, this is a skill. I was like, yeah. this, this. I was like, what do you want to do? She said, I want to be a conservation officer. I said, you don't think that's applicable? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. shit. On your on your resume, How I was many like, get the fuck out. Rednecks, are you gonna have to it's, steal their fish from? It, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and then, then <laughs> go and steal their guns. You're a woman. And go steal their guns so that then they can give them to me. But anyway, but yeah, whatever. But what I'm saying. The, the thing that drives me a little nuts about that urban survival stuff is, like, that guy really, if, if it's real, he's fucking with people's lives. Yeah. I, I don't like that. No, for sure. I, I and, and especially with women. It gives people a lot of self, self, false confidence, yeah. I think. Yeah. And and you I, think I, that you can he created something. that content so that he would get famous on YouTube, and he knows that. And he's and done the it. The way that you do sad. it and the way that you present it, I mean, you could try but he knows what he's doing. I mean, you know, like... If it's a parody, it's fine. Like, if he one day comes out and says, hey, this is all a joke, you know, I just want to see how far the rabbit hole I could go down. Right. I'm good. But if he goes down that rabbit hole for a long time... And yeah, then says, that is true. Like, but if okay, someone's sending him to California dessert. to teach all the police officers over there how to... I think he's <laughs> playing a true. character for sure, yeah, but nice. I think he I thinks mean, that he's... The world we live in today... Legit. That's true. And that's, you know, that's very true. People I mean, see that and they say, you know what, that's the safest route. And he's right. Yeah. Because yeah. look, you pinched route. my thigh and it hurt. Dude, do you know how many soft people we have in this world today? Yeah. That you pinch their thigh and they're like, shit, that hurts. I don't want to... That yeah, but you're also me. a normal human being that's just sitting <laughs> just, at a chair. You're not actually a crackhead someone. that accosts you on the street. Yeah. It's not going to 
you know, I had a taser mm -hmm. that freaking dude on bath salt 16 times well, the I, other day, but you're going to stop him by pinching his thigh. I, I do agree. <laughs> I do agree that jujitsu try. I, I believe that jujitsu tries to be the most realistic because like, I've even heard in those Gracie self-defense things, they're like, hey, a crackhead that's on crack, they're not going to feel any of this. Yeah. Even a broken arm, they're not going to feel right, that. You've got to choke, choke them unconscious. Well, and, and the other part that you sucks. You can hold them down, too, and wait exactly. for someone else well, to come. The part that sucks is, I mean, some of these, like these bath salt things, like when you watch some of these videos, I mean, you can have eight cops sitting on them yeah. and they still somehow can move. I mean, They'll it's unbelievable. Play. I don't understand how that's possible. Chest and like, I bet moving. you could take Dude. Gordon Ryan and he could hold down anybody on bath salt. Yeah, probably. Probably Gordon Ryan, but, you but know, I again, mean, we're talking about one Gordon Ryan. <laughs> you, got, you know, you're talking about the well, best grappler in the world. I bet that's Cyborg could do it. If Gordon us Ryan, three, 15 guys on bath salt. Well, I bet if I'm go. on bath salt, Cyborg can hold me down, no problem. Well, yeah, but think about it like this. Let's take us three and it's Cyborg, but not Cyborg, right? It's just Cyborg. It's Jeff Ray, right? Well, he's huge. Right. So, but I'm just saying, you know, like you don't know when you're going to these situations what you're getting into. And could you imagine trying to hold someone like Jeff Ray down? I just twisted on that. <laughs> well, so I just move forward, it. Chad. Twist it. Just but, move uh, forward. But yeah, that's the problem is, is we're trying to get all this shit to fit into one scenario. And there's a trillion yeah, yeah. So scenarios. That, that's a really succinct and way to put it. The way to make it all work is you need to train full time. Yeah. I agree. And Jiu Jitsu is one of the few sports where you can. Spar full contact every yeah. day. Do I get agree that, realism? that sport jujitsu won't work? Yes and no. 50 50. Yeah, right? yeah. Uh, clearly, clearly, it's going to so suck if you're rear naked choking someone and they bite a massive chunk of your forearm out. Yeah. Right? Like, yeah, I mean, you're. They're only going to bite you for a second until they're asleep. Well, yeah, but if the, you go to do it and they go down and they're, you know, and they're biting your arm off and you're trying to choke them. And then I their mean, teeth get smashed in from you fucking squeezing I, them. I, like, I, I, I will. You know, there's some stuff that's really dangerous that you don't think you do a triangle to someone and they. they well, I don't bite know if you. I'm going to triangle somebody in a street fight. But, but I'm just saying, like, these are all the situations that I think if you train long mm -hmm. enough, right? You think a little bit smarter about those things, but if you don't, you could be in real big you, danger. You are also negating that you can also punch back and strike right. back. Right? No, that, for and sure. That people are always acting like, "Oh yeah, that jiu-jitsu shit don't work," and then you're like, "Well, that's also if I'm not striking uh -huh. you." Yeah. And yeah, you, I mean, you know strike. that they, there's a reason it's illegal to hit someone in the back of the head in martial arts too. It's because you could elbow someone in the back of the head from a rear naked choke position, and, yeah. and they're gonna that. be kill fucking that. hurt bad. Yeah. So there's like, a, yeah. there's so. a fighter. Um, uh, he he fights at cage honor cards, um, and he. He said this and, and is very funny, but he is also true. Is uh, um, some guy said, "Oh, you know, you have all those rules in MMA. I, I would beat your ass if, if we were in the streets." And he goes, "You're taking um, into effect that I would not just ignore all those rules because we are fighting in the street. Yeah. I fight like a gentleman in the cage. I cannot <laughs> fight like a gentleman if you want me to." Right. And it was very intimidating and that very was scary. Fun. Yeah, that was horrifying. That <laughs> yeah. is horrible. You just yeah. said it. And I got yeah. chilled. And the, guy, <laughs> for sure. the guy comes out in a onesie and he's the most intimidating <laughs> man in the world. Yeah, it's, exactly. It's very cool, dude. Yeah. But. Pretty pretty amazing thing. All right, so let's go on to this is uh, this is like the piece de resistance that I've made for uh, like uh, the segments, is, and it's it's a total rip off of a podcast I listen to. But I I, I want to slight not a rip off. I know it says it, but it's it's not true. Um, it, it's a, it's a slight variation of also like that uh, the resume game. But I think I think you'll enjoy it now. We're gonna preface this. I was supposed to say this at the beginning uh, before we started filming. <laughs> Let's stay away from any characteristics that could be borderline racist. Okay. <laughs> so Chad, it's okay, Chad. X, we're good. If we say if we say X <laughs> guy, and we say X guy, that X just throw it out. Just be like, you know what? Let's not even throw that in there. Okay. okay. All right. So this is the game. We are looking for characteristics, and Ronnie helped me with this, so big plug to Ronnie here. We are looking for characteristics and personality of these people. Okay? It can be described, this person, but let's not be racist. That's the rule. Okay? So let me give you an example. You're really handcuffing this. Here. I know. I'm handcuffing <laughs> you guys. Um, um, let me give you an example. This is The first one is your dream MMA coach or jiu-jitsu coach. Okay? Example. A guy who never has competed, wears a fanny pack, and speaks in poems. Okay? <laughs> so we all know who that is. Yeah. But what is coach. your, like, dream coach? <laughs> like, when you're looking on the sidelines and you're seeing this guy, you're like, 
Oh shit, that's my dream coach right Sewer there. Sewer rat? <laughs> you're not supposed to just say a name. Yes. Oh, right. yeah, you're describing. Describe the sewer. Okay, let me give you the football <laughs> analogy. Okay, so like, we all watch enough football. We know where like this is going, right? Like football. I love in sports general. ball. Sports ball. Okay. okay. So, um, <laughs> I I, this this is the example the other day I heard. Somebody <laughs> said, "I want my offensive coordinator to be one of two people. The first person is is the ba- the band down the hatches who gives a shit. We're just going to keep running our offense, triple option guy." So he says he needs to have a belly, but if you punch it, it's hard as shit. <laughs> okay. Okay. So then he said that's his dream offensive coordinator. So ban down the hatches. We run triple option. We don't give a shit what they do. We're just gonna run our offense. Or you have the nerdy guy with glasses that has a calculator, and he's like, I'm gonna find all of. I'm gonna find the little things that they're not doing, and I'm gonna throw it to our running back because we have a 23% chance to win if we throw it to our running back seven times a game. Okay. Okay, so that's what you're looking for here. So uh, let me go back over the scenario. Your dream jiu-jitsu coach, the example, was a guy who's never competed, wears a fanny pack, and he speaks in poems. Now, you can describe your jiu-jitsu coach however you want. Uh, Ronnie's probably the most prepared, so I'll go to yeah. Ronnie first. Um, so uh, very similar to that, it, I, I want someone that um, definitely doesn't have a job, probably has like uh, – <laughs> Cheeto stains on their on their fingers because all they do is uh, eat Cheetos and, and watch mm-hmm. combat sports their entire that's it yep. where they're either training or they're either teaching or they are pouring over a video that's all they do nothing else that that's who I would want as a jiu jitsu coach because I know like okay they are pouring through everything finding the nuances and then exploiting them one follow up question yeah does he compete. I, it doesn't have time. He's too busy exactly. watching videos. Too many Cheetos to eat. His too body many, also many reflects he doesn't compete, right? Yeah. Okay, the, there we yeah. go. Yep, that's exactly, that's my dream coach. I think I want data from Star Trek. Right on to just naming people. <laughs> so, well, remember how he said he's not a person. Oh, so you right. want a cyborg. You got, you got me. Nailed or an android. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so describe this this humanoid <laughs> data Star Trek. I want a like almost a hundred year old man with a super long gray beard. He's got okay, glasses. Okay. He's got a turtle shell for a backpack. <laughs> he, uh, he lives in a house on an island on his own, way out in the ocean, and he just trains people constantly all day. Yeah. He has competed in the past, and sure. he's won Dragon many, Z, many yeah. Chad, okay. he's won many <laughs> in the Chad, past. Chad, 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 yep. And uh, I think that guy would be a great well, ideal Goku. jiu-jitsu coach. Chad, <laughs> <laughs> you already have data. <laughs> We're now, not naming people. Now, no, no. <laughs> Brandon, follow, follow-up yeah. question, yeah. of Whoa. course. Uh, d- does this... Does this person, is he like live and in living color or is he brightly colored? That was with me my question. You know, is he animated? He lives on the borderline, <laughs> but he is very eccentric. Uh-huh. He is he is colorful. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't want to put anyone under the bus here, but. All right. I want a guy that's full of a lot of s- circuits. Okay. <laughs> Almost like he's a robot, uh-huh. but kind of like a human. Right. <laughs> Really smart. Full of circuits. <laughs> you know, whatever, whatever. Analyzes yeah. everything that happens. Oh, wow. <laughs> but it's not data. But it's not data. But if ch- I could, I'd like to have the USS Enterprise as well. It's it's robot <laughs> Spock. What, what is, man. Oh, what is man. Charlie Kelly's line in It's Always Sunny where he where he says, uh, they go, what do you like? I like milk steak? <laughs> Ghouls? <laughs> yeah. Magnets. <laughs> so, I'm just more steak? happy yep, about that. you think that inside, of, like, or, you know, inside of day, inside a cyborg is just circuits. <laughs> well, there's there's got to no, be a circuit, that was, right? That was just, just that, circuits. That was, you're right? just throwing circuits in there and zip it up. <laughs> they don't have to many, many them. circuits. No wiring, no power source, just circuits. <laughs> It'll figure it out. Shake it. <laughs> Work. I mean, evolution. <laughs> oh. <laughs> It's, it's, it's gonna say words it's, now. It's amazing Purple. that it's Purple. amazing that we have two more of those. This oh. is great. All right, wow. um, your dream MMA striking coach. Okay, now uh, this example. <laughs> Jesus. Clearly, for the right reason. Yeah. Now we're getting into the racist part. All right, so uh, example. 
a that guy, a guy, a guy who yeah, says, says no racism, not sexism. A guy <laughs> who says the pads don't hit back. Keep your hands up. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's an example. So, you mean? That's an example of like the that's personality. What Mike was I guess I, I got. I didn't go as as um, you know. No circuits in this one. <laughs> no circuits. Um, that I want someone that is um, kind of the same way, but just needs to be always keeping up on the current stuff. It's not like I, I, I don't want an older person. I want someone younger. Or it, if they're not younger, at least they always are someone that's going to keep up with what's new because you can't just say, well, that's not how I was trained. We're going to do it my way. Right. The my way kind of people is you're – are, they are not the the Trevor Whitmans of the world. The the, the Jack McVickers. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We don't need we don't need those kind of people when you're talking, especially when you're talking striking. Like like you don't you don't want that in jujitsu either, but especially in striking because if there's like a new thing, that's what you want to try to incorporate or at least pick parts of it about. Um, so what if I'm going to describe this person? Definitely someone that's younger, um, someone that has doesn't actually have any um specific training like someone that's not like or like they've only boxed their whole career they've only done muay thai they've only done someone that is a a gym hoppers and then kind of takes it and forms it all into to one thing that's that's what i would want okay i think i would want somebody specifically with blonde hair with a red gi <laughs> with no sleeves right i think that would be a pretty ideal Did you watch star happy birthday video the other day it's really <laughs> funny that you said those two things. Welcome back to Chad is ADD. <laughs> wait for it. Wait okay. for it. He's I'm waiting. Bridget. Uh, one of McVicker's students the other day oh, got fuck. him to do a happy vi birthday video to Jack McVicker. I don't know. The what Master you... Ken. Oh. He oh, got okay. Master Ken to do a happy birthday video for Did McVicker. He? So it's funny that you put those that two things together. Uh, yeah, I had no idea. Uh, that was, <laughs> that was pretty good. Yeah, actually, that was, that was... I, now you're going to have to watch it later. Yeah, now, I'll now show it to you. It. All right. He literally gets Master Ken to give McVicker a happy birthday shout out. So now That's... he's now they got two McDojos. Yeah. <laughs> what about you, Chad? Green? All right. No. Purple's still the color. But anyways. <laughs> uh so you I want think that a, I would want a guy, an Asian foreigner, that to come grew and teach up you a majority kids. of his life in a prison, oh, right? Okay. Like a really dark prison, like from when he was a young child. Oh God. Okay. I put it together. And then he has to, and it's in a deep hole. Mm -hmm. Right. And Is he, he supplemented by way. some sort of mm -hmm. steroid? Fight his way. No, he just has to fight his way out of that prison mm -hmm. in the middle of nowhere. That's right. And he kills a bat. Well, so how is um he tries? How is this person's uh, home life like? How is yeah. their connection to their parents? Well, it's non-existent. Oh no! Very oh man. <laughs> man! What do they look like? The guy? Or? Yeah. What the guy look like? Well, he talks funny. <laughs> 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 so this is the segment Chad's gonna blow up. Yeah. It wasn't the other one. It wasn't the resume yeah, one. I got hit. I got. I got his attention on but the we resume got there. one. But yeah, we got there eventually. <laughs> All right. Um, last one. I think this is this is the the funny. This is the one that I think that you can make the most jokes about. But I don't think we can make any more jokes. Honestly, this your is actually the one that is both minor jokes. Yeah, so. exactly. So <laughs> your dream, on the first your, two. your dream, <laughs> your dream judge is scoring. Uh, your dream judge who is scoring your championship mats uh, for uh, Jits. Brandon and Chad, MMA for Ronnie. So my example would be a former fighter with tribal tattoos who always smiles, but you're not sure if he's happy. <laughs> All right. He's the ref? Judge. He's, the judge. he's judge. judging your mouth. So like if you could not pick three Brazilians that are going to fuck you, right. yeah, then you could pick this one person to be your judge that you know you're like, oh, man. this guy can't name him, right? This guy's going to get me. Right. Yeah, okay. That's not the game. All right. So I got two answers. So okay. um, both MMA. So one, if uh, if if it's Tristan's fight, and I'm cornering Tristan, exactly. so the judges I really want to see are uh, three moms, because <laughs> there you go. he's gonna get that decision. Damn right. Damn right. <laughs> and mine is um, the uh, three people that just like before they all they all went out to um, McDonald's right before and they ate together and came in. They see my fat ass walking in the cage like. We got you, bro. 
You, if you even get close to like doing good, you're yeah. you're gonna win this. Yeah, one. I just yeah. I just need to survive. Exactly, one hundred percent. I think my ideal uh, person would be like six foot two, two hundred and twenty five pounds. Um, kind of look sculpted like a Greek goddess, god, <laughs> Greek goddess. Uh-huh. Okay. Uh, okay. And he would say, "You motherfuckers need to step your game up." All right. I feel like my ideal judge. <laughs> so I had to pick. Oh, I'll, I'll follow up. Follow up. Um, so, th- this person, do we worship at his altar? You do, not me. Oh, okay. <laughs> Just check. Right. Go ahead. Sorry. Uh, mine, <laughs> she, she'd be about five oh, she, six. Oh, there we go. She's. Uh, Is it your girlfriend? No. Oh. She, she's really nice. She's very respectful of me in particular. Still your girlfriend? No. Your mom? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's her. That would be my ideal judge for a yeah. match. Exactly. Yeah, That's you right. can never lose for sure. <laughs> yeah. Mom, I got tapped out. You still win. <laughs> Raise his damn hand. Brandon. Brandon, you tried. <laughs> you tried hard. You're a winner yeah. in my heart. I've heard that too many times, you know? <laughs> All right. So if you want Brandon's mom to be your judge... Um, then you just need to watch this next technique video where Chad's going to show you some amazing stuff and he's going to like throw Brandon around stuff. And bring some dollars. But he's still going to win. Of course. <laughs> thanks, Mom. <laughs> thanks. thanks to all the moms. Is that our sign-off now? Yeah. Everyone just says, thanks, Mom. <laughs> I, I think that a lot of people don't address, it's kind of like you're standing up and you're hand fighting, right? How many times can you shoot on someone and take somebody down if you don't address their hands? Okay. So I think a lot of times when people are actually wanting to be guard pass, they're not setting it up correctly. They're just trying to rush in and get the guard pass. So the biggest thing that like the battle should be is what is he doing with my feet, with his feet, you know, like am I moving around, right? Or am I just trying to go right through the middle? You know? Am I just trying to bum rush and then trying to knee cut or trying to push these things off? Or am I actually addressing his feet going on me, right? Because What's your, you know, ask yourself, what is your opponent doing when they're starting to attack and use their guard, right? Are they putting their feet on me? Are they getting grips? What grips are they getting? Um, what guards are they setting up, right? Like, and those are the things that you have to start seeing if you want to start actually passing someone's guard. You can't shut down all these things if you don't know what they are. Does that make sense? I don't know Del I don't know Reverse Del I don't know Butterfly I don't know Spider Guard. I don't know Close Guard. I can't see those things coming, right? I mean, close guard can be prevented a lot just by understanding what the person's trying to do, right? Like, if I'm here and Brandon's trying to suck his hips up into me, right? I can't just accept this position. This is bad for me. Now I just accept the position letting the person get full control of my body, right? Or when I'm right here, I should be backing up, you know, and not letting that position happen in the beginning. So I think a lot of times we accept things that we should accept. So that's just something to think about. But I want to start, let's do, um, there's a lot of passes and you got to train all the passes to okay. mm-hmm. And teaching people to do that is the hardest thing in the world. Okay? So I want to do where we step in the middle, okay? And I want to staple the leg, okay? And then I also want to do the back step. So, Open the legs here, okay? We're going to be here, hand fighting, feet fighting, looking for what we want, okay? And then I want to staple my leg down, okay? So I'm going to bring the leg up and I'm going to staple it down. I'm going to staple his leg to the mat, and I almost want the knee shield, okay? So what I want to think about once I staple the leg down is how I want to pass from here. But I want to be able to have my weight over Brandon, right? Like I want to be sitting on him where I have these positions and I'm smashing his leg. That makes sense? I don't want to just be sitting here on this angle where he can like push me away and he can start coming out of my back. So when I staple, I want to think about stapling where I get, it's kind of like the build pass that we did last week, I don't know who was here for that. Uh, but I want to be able to be here, right? And then staple down, get my weight on top of it. Now there's like this hand fighting battle that he's trying to get the distance to keep me away. Now I'm trying to keep him smashed. Does that make sense? Okay. So, 
Now, what I want to think about doing is all the different paths they could have. Okay? I'm going to try not to throw too much into this. X pass can happen right here. Right? So the X pass can happen by me just grabbing the shin here and having my weight already, and I can push him back up. Okay? And a lot of times he'll give us that, but I want to think here, right? We push in, okay? When I'm ready, this leg comes up and staples down. Right? As soon as it staples down, I'm trying to make sure that you can't push me away when I'm here. Making sure that I'm carrying your weight. Okay? Now when I'm ready, hip, knee, okay? You notice I'm trying to keep my head crossing his body so that he can't shrimp away and escape and all different stuff. Go to the knee, right? So then I'm going to walk him up. So I'm going to push up, X pass. Second one, and you guys need to be able to come back to all these positions comfortably, right? So the next one I want to do is I'm here and I want to club his head here, like as deep as I can, right? And then this arm's going to come free and it's going to go to the back of his foot that I've already jacked, right? So I'm putting all my weight on that knee shield. I want to come right in front of the foot and I'm going to block it. So my hip right now and everything. It's already smashing it, okay? And then my hand's gonna close the back here, okay? So the miss is gonna come back and it's gonna go right in front of his toes. Like you can grab his foot, you can do whatever you want, right? But all I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna switch. Okay? So then I'm finding him out and putting him down on the mat, and then coming. Okay? And then the last one I wanna do, so. I try to be in a habit of doing this every time. Like here, stop, weight over. And now you've got this good base, you've got this good control. Okay, you did the X pass one, you club the head one. Okay, so now what I want to think about doing is I'm going to go to this thigh. Okay, right here. And every grip that we're going to do is going to make sense. Okay, so what I want to do now is I want to think about pushing away. Like I'm going to push away here and then come over. So I just want to free myself to come back over that leg. So staple down. Anywhere you can grab will help, right? The knee will help really good, the thigh. Okay. I'm here, at the collar, anywhere. But even if he's blocking my knee from coming through, right? I can back up and I can pull myself over. Okay. Those are three different kind of paths I want to work on. Alright? Alright. <laughs>